do it, or both SIUE and the University of Illinois. He's got a background in uh, government affairs. And for the last three years, he's been the CEO of the Greater Gateway Association of Realtors here in town, but their area also covers, oh, Kyle, you're gonna have to correct me, but I know it goes up to Vandalia and uh, quite a bit of the surrounding area. So with that, I'll turn it over to Kyle for uh, his presentation. Well, uh, thanks a lot, Russell. Um, Russell knows me pretty well, so that's why I was pretty shocked he asked me to speak. So um, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, I know a lot of uh, people on here and uh, a lot of great community leaders and uh, truly appreciate it. Uh, Art's my guitar guy too. So <laughs> um, uh, my very first guitar was a uh, Telecaster we bought from this Collinsville store. I think it was before the Everville store opened up. Um, I still play it. It's a beautiful guitar. So um, I can share my screen, right? Um, here we go. And uh, feel free to unmute yourself. Talk to me, ask questions, do please. Yeah, I'm a, I like to interact. So uh, the more interaction, the better. Uh, so there are gonna be a couple of questions that I'm gonna ask of you guys uh, that I want you to talk about and, uh, and, and start some dialogue. Um, I told you I love coffee. So um, that's why my slide is of a coffee cup. So as Russell mentioned, um, we uh, are a realtor association. So we, all real estate licensees, you know, um, you, you have to be a real estate licensee in order to be a realtor, but not all uh, real estate licensees are realtors. So um, you have to uh, join us. You have to uh, pay a, a yearly due. Um, and uh, it does afford you certain uh, uh, privileges. One of those being the MLS, the Multiple Listing Service, which uh, ours is Maris, the Midwest uh, Area Regional something, I forget, information systems. It's, uh, it's, they're huge, they're Missouri, about 14,000 uh, realtor members belong to them. So that is what our membership uh, puts all of your uh, listing information in to, uh, to sell your house. And 14,000 realtors see it, in addition to being pushed out to all the third party portals, we call them, uh, Trulia, Zillow, Realtor.com, all of those. Um, so as Russell mentioned, we cover Madison, Bond, Clinton, McCoupin, Montgomery, Jersey, uh, and Calhoun. Um, we also go out all the way to Fayette, like Vandalia area. Uh, we also have people in St. Clair County, uh, Monroe. We have a, a very, very sparse uh, or geographic, a huge geographic area where our membership uh, belongs, uh, all at the Pike County, um, and, uh, and we're growing. When I took over about three years ago, we had about 845 members, uh, and now you can see that we're over uh, 1,100 members, and uh, we're about uh, 1,000 realtors strong, people who buy and sell, uh, or represent buyers and sellers uh, and appraisers. Uh, we're about, 11, or about 1,000 members strong, so we're up quite a bit. Um, part of it is because we recruit a lot, and second is because um, the market, you know, was doing well uh, for a long time, and I'll get a little bit more into that. Uh, the three things we kind of focus on as an association is uh, we educate. Obviously, we want to keep our membership uh, not only legal in the aspects of uh, a lot of you guys have state licenses, so you have to have taken, take certain CE, et cetera, so we do that. We also provide education courses on uh, best practices above and beyond what is required uh, of the um, of a, just a normal real estate licensee. And then in addition, uh, we also try to do business classes to help them be successful in the real estate industry. Uh, a bigger, bigger portion of what we do is advoc advocate. So uh, that is not only for our membership, but in addition to our membership, we also advocate on behalf of the housing consumer. Um, so that is uh, either be personal prop or, uh, property rights, uh, basically what, what you can or cannot do on your property, uh, things of that nature, architectural standards, things of that nature, uh, we will advocate very, very much you know, on, on. One of the things that goes unmentioned a lot of times, as a result of 2008, there was a, Congress introduced legislation called the PATH Act, the Protecting American Taxpayers and Homeowners Act. 
essentially what it would have done was got rid of Freddie and Fannie. Now, Freddie and Fannie are not perfect. However, they do play one vital role, and that is to buy a 30-year mortgage. So uh, we are one of the few countries uh, in the world that offer a 30-year mortgage, which we cite as being one of the biggest wealth creators in our country. Um, and uh, so the PATH ads would have essentially got rid of Freddie and Fannie over five years and essentially would have done away because private markets were telling us we're not, we're not interested in holding on uh, to 30 year mortgages. We're just not, um, it's high risk, higher risk, lower return uh, typically. So as a result, um, that would have done away with it. We stopped that from taking place. And if that would have happened, uh, home sales and as a result, home values would have probably plummeted. Um, in addition, we also do um, uh, service. So we are, we are very much of a community driven organization. I wrote down the golf scramble, the children's museum. Um, if there's any way that we can play a role in helping our community, we will try, try to do our best. Uh, we have grants that we can apply for, for parks, for planning, et cetera. Um, so please utilize this as a resource for that. I'm not saying we'll, we'll always have money and we'll always be able to, to contribute, but uh, we will do, our, do everything we can um, to do that. Um, anybody, any questions so far? Okay, so some of the things that, that we're going to discuss um, is a lot of data. And uh, the national data, I had to give credit to Dr. Lawrence Yoon. We're supposed to have him come in. He's a national uh, economist, uh, has been on CNN, Fox News. Um, he is a go-to guy if anybody wants to know what the real estate market's doing. He's a very, very smart individual. Um, so uh, my national data comes from him. The Illinois data comes from the Illinois Realtors, our statewide association, and Showing Time, which is um, uh, the process by which you schedule uh, uh, showings. So like if your realtor wants to show you a house, you have to go into Showing Time, say, we want to see it Tuesday at 5 p.m. And that's Showing Time. So they track everything, you know, Big Brother's watching. And then local sales data comes from uh, Maris, as I mentioned, uh, our local uh, multiple listing service. Um, so before we get into the, the discussion about the data, this is where I want you to unmute and kind of have a conversation because I'm always interested in this. Um, I think, let me see here, you should be able to, to either do a thumbs up on your, on your, on your um, you should be able to show emotions, I think. Maybe not. Um, you, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down if COVID has changed your spending habits. If you'd like to elaborate on it a little bit, let me know. There, yeah, Mark, Mark said it. Anybody else change their spending habits? Feel free to unmute. Uh, we, we don't eat out as much, um, which is good. I'm down 10 pounds. Um, but uh, we don't eat out as much. We, we uh, aren't doing quite as much like movies and stuff like that. Um, so it has changed our spending habits. And I'm not... Even since it, we've opened up a little bit, I haven't found myself going out to eat quite as much. I come home for, for um, lunch now since we live in, uh, on Dunlap Lake. Uh, we, we just recently moved to Dunlap Lake. As soon as we moved in, Rich Walker put his house up for sale. Not really, but um, I wouldn't blame him if he did. <laughs> um, feel free to chime in, Rich. Uh, and uh, I always know it's his house because there's a big SIUE uh, flag hanging from the back. So. Um, Kyle, I think one of the things that's changed is people aren't going on vacations far away. They're staying closer to home. Yeah, that's, that's definitely the case. We canceled our, our Florida vacation and, and uh, went close. So you're right. Um, we went to Holiday World instead. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, world economy, I, I think a majority of people's view of the world economy has changed um, as a result of this, knowing that um, I think certain businesses have to look for opportunities everywhere. Um, and they can't look just local. And I think COVID kind of highlighted that. It's been that way, globalization of the world economy, you know, obviously has been there for a while. But I think that this, even at a micro level anymore, people are looking um, for the different marketplaces that they can try to um, export their goods or services to um, uh, all across the world. I think it's totally changed that. Our local economy, yeah, like, like you said, Mark, I, I, tourism 
locally has, uh, have been bumped up as a result. If people do do something, it's typically local. And if you guys could unmute and talk about this real quick, um, what are your views for the long-term economy? You guys are all business leaders or a lot of you are business leaders or very in tune with the, especially the local economy. Um, what are your guys' views for a long-term economy and what kind of things are, are going to hinder it or help it? Kyle, I think uh, part of that will be determined, you know, based on how long you know, some of these restrictions go on from Illinois. And then obviously, you know, some of the federal actions with the PPP money and uh, some of the money the uh, federal government pumped into the economy. Kind of once those kind of die down here in the next couple of months, I think will be uh, either, you know, a point where hopefully things get better or, uh, you know, potentially they slide backwards. So. I think the next couple of weeks and months will be uh, crucial for that. I totally agree. Um, anybody else before we move on? Um, we always state that the uh, real estate market is kind of a leading indicator um, uh, in that combined with uh, unemployment and obviously unemployment can't get loans if uh, you're unemployed. Uh, so they go obviously hand in hand, but I think our long-term economy, I think there's going to be uh, a bump um, uh, for the short term, and then it's going to drop um, again uh, uh, as a result of some of our unemployment numbers. Speaking specifically about real estate, um, between January and March, this is nationally, we were on track to have one of our best years. Um, so if you look, can you guys see my mouse? So um, if you look from January to March, we were on a, a pretty steep incline. Uh, similar to what we experienced back in January of 19. Um, the th we started off at a higher level and we're going higher. Um, even back to January 2018, we were experiencing one of our best housing markets nationwide in a long time. Then along comes COVID and it plummets. But if you notice, our members are busy again. I mean, we are, we are selling a lot of property. Um, I forget who it was. Um, a member told me this is the best year she's ever had. Now, is that true for any, for everybody? Obviously not. But uh, a lot of a lot of our realtors are are experiencing some of the best markets they've they've had. So um, when I say a bump, I think that's going to be a bump, um, a major bump. We did a, a economic impact study a while back of a uh, home sale, and locally in our MSA or our metropolitan statistical area, uh, the average impact was somewhere around uh, fourteen to twenty thousand dollars. I think. Uh, accounting for inflation, I think the average one is going to be about 16.5 uh, right now. So every time a home sales uh, happens between taxes, commission, new roof, um, furniture. So far for our new house, we've got new furniture, we've gotten uh, a new roof, a boat. Um, we've done way over that 16.5. Um, new flooring, painting, everything. Um, and so I do think that we're gonna experience a bump for a little bit because of this uptick. Um, so uh, part of the reason why uh, you'll notice our, our home values have not dropped. Um, so home values are still riding pretty high. Uh, and a lot of it is uh, twofold, is multiple offers. So one property, uh, properties that are receiving three offers or more as you can tell, have been slowly on the, on the uptick uh, for quite some time. Um, and as a result, that's because of low inventory. So it's definitely a seller's market right now um, as a result of, uh, of low inventory. People can um, definitely not um, hold out or, or not say, yeah, we'll take the very first offer. They can hold out for the second and third offer, uh, which typically happens very, very quickly. So um, we're nearing three offers uh, per sold property, which is, which is up about one um, uh, whole offer, which is, which is a lot. It makes a much more competitive uh, marketplace uh, for buyers. Um, I will also state um, that I know a lot of people out there have a, a, a misnomer and there are a lot of data. There's a, a leading thought leader in our, uh, in real estate, Brad Inman. He's actually from Carlinville. He lives in San Francisco now, but he's a, a big name in real estate. He's kind of a, a, a pot stirrer, 
but um, he throws out all these accusations and he says, you know, young people and, and uh, they don't want to own. They don't want to own. Um, we have a lot of data that, that proves otherwise, and uh, this helps back that up. Um, there are a lot of people out there who want to be uh, a home buyer. And so even during this turbulent time, uh, over a third of uh, home sales in July were first time home buyers, which is a fantastic um, uh, site because typically what that does, it pushes that, that home buyer into a bigger house. So that will hopefully expand uh, the impact of, of you know, the economic impact up into higher echelon or more expensive homes, uh, which is good for the overall economy. So that's really all I have uh, at the national. Um, I think that Lauren June will state that um, he's not concerned about uh, the first half of 2021. He's more worried about the, 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 the third and fourth quarter, primarily the fourth quarter. And I'll get a little bit more into that here in a little bit. Um, Illinois, despite what everybody says, um, is doing pretty well. Um, even in Chicago, um, it's, it's not bad as far as the percentage of home sales compared to a year ago is up. Um, and the whole state of Illinois is, is up in accordance to homes sold. I understand that that means that people are selling their houses and they're moving out. I'm, I can't argue the, uh, the flight. Um, I don't think it's down here as much as, as some of the media would lead you to believe. But in our metro area, I don't, I don't believe it's as bad. Um, Chicago does have some flight, but people do still want to live in Illinois. Um, I think sometimes we're our own worst enemy in the sense that uh, we talk so bad to Illinois uh, and we're kind of in an echo chamber to a certain degree that if we just started talking a little more positive, maybe we might be a little more positive. Uh, obviously politics plays a huge role in that and, um, but, and the voter decides that, but um, I think if we did so, a little bit more to just project a more positive image of people who uh, live here, um, maybe it won't hurt us. <laughs> so this is a little bit, you can tell people, hey, houses still are selling in Illinois. Uh, people might be moving out of, the, out of the state, but people still do well live here. So this is um, a, a more local um, snapshot. And this just kind of goes over uh, some of the key indicators uh, that, that we track uh, for our MSA. Um, and so new listings uh, are up, which is, which is, is good for the buyer, um, but it's not up enough to where it's gonna drastically change uh, the, you know, the buyer's disadvantage right now. It's definitely still a seller's market. Um, for just say Madison County, 700 listings for a 250,000 population county is not a lot. So um, that's, uh, uh, we need more listings. Pending sales, so houses, as you can tell, houses are selling um, uh, in here. And we do see a lot of um, upward mobility. So we are, we are seeing people who are, who are selling their first time home buyer and moving up to a little bit more bigger or a little bit more higher priced uh, home. So that, that's a good sign. Uh, days on market which is another big one, is um, so pending and closed, they should go pretty much hand in hand, which they do. Uh, days on market, kind of tell us how, how hot a market is. And we've had very little change um, overall, uh, year to date uh, and year over year. So um, that means that, you know, people still are confident in buying a home, uh, home here uh, as well. And, and houses typically aren't on the market real, real long, two months, two and a half months. It may seem like a long time and, and you got to keep your house clean that long, but that overall that's not, that's not really, really crazy. Most people look at houses on the weekends and if you look at two months, that's, you know, eight weekends. You know, it's a really eight Sundays. That's not, that's not a huge, huge number. Uh, meeting and sales price, like I said, it is a seller's market. So that's going up uh, month to month and year over year. So that's a, that's a good sign for, for sellers. Um, maybe a little bit bad sign for your taxes and for uh, uh, if you're buying right now. Um, let's see what else. Um, so as you can tell, month supply of inventory. Um, overall, that's that's you know still because houses are not staying on the market very long, and despite our new listings going up, our inventory is still kind of shoddy. 
So um, we need more, uh, more inventory. So citing that, looking at the new listings, um, it's on the uptick. However, it's not where it needs to be in order to meet demand. So that's, um, if, you're, if you're thinking about selling your house, um, now's a good time. We sold our house in Hamill for actually more than what we paid for our house in Neversville, quite a bit. We doubled our house size. We had to put a lot of money into it. Um, but um, ours was in a state and we just, we got lucky. And, uh, but my point is we, we did very well on our house in, in Hamill compared to what we paid for it and what we sold it for. So right now is a, is a, it's a good time to sell. Um, it, and um, good question. It kind of varies uh, according to your geography. Uh, right now in Eversville, I think you're looking at 250 to 300 is, is very hard to keep on the market. Um, but we're even seeing upticks above that to the 300 to 500,000. If you go over 500, it's, it's a little bit of a struggle um, right now. I'm not saying it's impossible, but there is a little bit of a struggle. But 250 to 300, or even 200 to 300, you, I'd feel confident putting an offer on another house non-contingent if I was selling a 250 or $300,000 house. I'd feel really comfortable just putting an offer on non-contingent to buy another house. So um, other areas, obviously, that's going to vary. Um, you know, Edwardsville, Lynn Carbon, I kind of lumped them together. But if you're looking at, you know, uh, Collinsville, you're probably looking at, at 150 to 200 is your, is your hot market. Um, that's just because of, uh, of demand, obviously. So does that answer your question, Ann? Hopefully it does. Closed sales, um, as you can tell, are, are, are on the uptick. Um, so people are wanting, you know, to do that. So if you combine the closed sales going up, uh, the days on market staying the same or even decreasing a little bit and our inventory not increasing, um, prices are going to dr drastically, drastically increase, um, which, is, which is good for sellers, bad for buyers. Um, things to look out for in 2021 is uh, obviously the unemployment rate. So there's two things you need to track. You need to track the new um, unemployment numbers and the extended, those that have been unemployed for over 90 days. Um, those are you know, some big indicators on the long-term health of the economy. Uh, another thing you need to look out for if you're in, in, in real estate or, or worried about your house is the number of list pendants in your market. It's the, uh, the start of the foreclosure process. Um, and what I mentioned earlier about Lauren June stating that um, he anticipates the housing market taking a little bit of a hit third quarter, fourth quarter of next year. I anticipate that Illinois, because we're a judicial state as far as the foreclosure process goes, Illinois will be a little bit behind that curve. So um, because we are a judicial state, it will um, uh, take a little bit longer for us to feel that effect. Uh, so if, if Lawrence is predicting a uh, third quarter, fourth quarter, uh, like small burst in the market. Um, I would anticipate we experience that, that burst probably about six months later, if I had to guess. Um, investment property, um, if, you know, if, if it's an interest, I would really start looking third or fourth quarter of next year. Because Lawrence might be right, it might hit us right then and there. Don't be behind the curve, but if, if investment property is, is what you're um, uh, looking for, I, I would really encourage it third, fourth quarter next year, next year to really start looking. Um, one of the things that's infl that helped, um, for those of you who are Jerry Seinfeld fans, um, what's up with the interest rates? Can they be any lower? Um, and that's really helped provide a crutch uh, to the housing industry. People, um, it's basically free money out there for a house for 30 years. So as a result, people are buying. Uh, so that's, an, that's done a huge, huge number to helping keep up or prop up the uh, housing market. So um, any questions, thoughts? That's, that's really all I have um, as of right now. I appreciate the opportunity. I'm going to stop share. If you have any questions or thoughts or concerns or tell me I'm a wackadoodle, you can do that too. Um, Kyle, I have two. Um, yeah. One is um, I'm, I've heard in some cases, I don't know, if there's any truth to it, is there more of a, a push for people moving out of metro urban areas 
and out into the country as a result of the uh, pandemic? And then uh, the, uh, the I, second question. Go yes, ahead. Totally, Mark, yes. Okay. Uh, and then I think in the last year or two, I heard you give a presentation comparing um, the, um, I don't know, the afford, affordability, affordability or comparing buying in the Metro East versus St. Louis area, you know, with regards to taxes and all that stuff is how does, how's that set in these days? Well, uh, we are trying to get that updated now. Um, we worked with SIUE last time, Dr. John Foster uh, from the PAPA office, and we're trying to work with him again to update that study. Uh, I forget exactly what year it was, but we conducted a tax study where he analyzed um, the entirety of a of the tax impact on a family. So uh, we stink at property taxes. We're terrible. We're, we're second in the country next to New Jersey. And no offense if you're from New Jersey, if you're typically, if you're ever close to New Jersey in any ranking, that's not good. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna put it out there, um, but we're second in the country in property taxes. But as a result, um, if you look at the overall tax burden, meaning sales tax, um, they do a better job of packaging their taxes to where it's not as of a dramatic one. So you pay, you know, a car tax, basically, you know, personal property tax, boat, um, camper, et cetera. Um, and uh, they do a better job of it. We took a little bit of a heat uh, of a hit um, this last time when the in income tax was, was in increased. And part of the reason why we're kind of holding off is we're going to see what happens with the graduated income tax. If we did a tax study right now and if, and the graduated income tax passes um, in Illinois, that's gonna make the, make the study basically null and void. Um, previously, we were very competitive um, in Missouri as far as you look at overall tax burden to a family of four. We were very competitive. We become less, a little less competitive as a result of some of the tax increases. However, looking at the whole story, if you live in Illinois or, if, or you work in Illinois, and you make six figures, really about ninety to one hundred and forty thousand. It still makes financial sense to live in Illinois. So if you work in Illinois, you make somewhere between ninety to one hundred and forty thousand. It still makes sense for you to live in Illinois, even with the property taxes, even with all that. Um, second, I still believe, and I think that we haven't looked at the data recently, but previously the data pro proved that square footage wise, or, you know, look at the housing affordability, a house that you're going to buy here, if you buy the same house over in the St. Louis metropolitan area, you're going to pay a lot more. And so if you take that over the course of 30 years, you're probably still paying more um, in fees or taxes or whatever, um, or, or your cost of living, the impact to your pocketbook is probably the same. Now, there is some better financial return. Um, in the long run, if you have a more expensive house over in St. Louis, but the the impact of your monthly budget is still going to be quite a bit higher. And you're, in my opinion, the quality of life is just fantastic over here. Uh, and as a result, I think um, you're paying more for less if you go over there. So again, I'm gonna I'm gonna stress. I still believe, even with the bad taxes we have, if you make between 90 and 140, and work in Illinois, you're gonna be smart to live here. Gina. Hi. Um, since the market is so good right now, if you're trying to sell your house, what are some suggestions suggestions that you would have to make your house stand out? Asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, I, I, I would always uh, re, uh, recommend utilizing a realtor. Um, and we have a whole bunch of good ones at Greater Gateway. Um, so uh, you can go to our website. Uh, first and foremost, um, things have changed since COVID. Uh, I know that um, House Logic, which is a NAR subsidiary, has stated um, outdoor spaces are huge right now. People, because of, of COVID, they're spending so much time there. Outdoor um, features are huge. Waterfalls, a, a fire pit, um, things of that nature are, are huge and can really add um, the livability to that. Second, making it feel as open as possible. And that's, an, that's another direct impact of, of COVID. 
Um, take away, take out everything that isn't necessary, um, furniture included. <laughs> if you're really going to list, every realtor will tell you to make as much space as possible, as much open floor space. Uh, take away the personal pictures, um, all of those types of things, um, and make it as, as open feeling as possible. But um, the biggest things people are looking for right now are proximity. So it, this kind of flies in the face, Mark, um, of uh, what I just said about people looking to go to the rural areas. But they are looking for, for amenities that they can, they can do, um, they, they can still do even during a pandemic. Um, but they're looking for uh, anything to do with outside living space uh, in your house. So if you're going to invest any money in it, kitchen is always huge and outdoor living features are, are really big sellers right now. Cool. I'm not sure about that, Ian. I don't think it increases your, your the value of your home by 10%. Um, it might be the markability might do it. You might get a, a, a looks or um, so Ann asked on the chat uh, if landscaping increases the value of your home by at least 10%. I don't believe it's that high. Um, there is some return on your investment if you do that. But I think that uh, uh, the biggest part of, of if you're gonna invest money is either kitchen or an outdoor feature, um, more so than just landscaping. But I, I don't believe that that's numbers totally right. It, I mean, it might be, but I, I don't think it's that high. But then if you're living in a, <laughs> sorry, Ann, I mean, plants are amazing for, <laughs> for... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, uh, obviously that plays a, plays a role in it. Um, especially there's a whole HGTV show based on curb appeal. So it does play a huge role in it. But I think, I think it's less actual value and more, uh, marketability and creating, uh, a multiple offer situation. I think Ann was skirting the uh, the boundaries there of getting fined for plugging her own business too. <laughs> I, I don't have a, a dog in that fight. Um, uh, Bob asked, uh, finishing basement, any living space does help. Yes, um, bedroom, bedroom in a basement's tricky. You gotta make sure that you have egress for it to be um, deemed a bedroom as well as a closet. Um, but yes, fin finishing a basement, especially right now, um, add value, uh, additional, like I said, additional living space in the time of COVID, as well as um, uh, some people are able to keep their house cooler because of a finished basement. They go down there and it's just naturally cooler. That sounds stupid, but yeah. I think Carrie's got a question. Yes. Hi, Kyle. Hi. This is Carrie Mitchell. And I just wanted to see if you could tell me your take um, as experience in dealing with these markets. How does a pool affect a home's resale value? I have always heard that there's no value to having a pool, but I know so many families who are wanting and will pay more for a property with a swimming pool. Has that changed? No, I, I, you're, you're exactly right. Um, the reason why we bought our house in Hamel was because they had a pool. Uh, we, had three, we had three little ones. Uh, Brent's been there lots. Um, and uh, uh, we bought it because, because of the pool. I, uh, uh, we walked through the house, saw the pool, and walked straight to the backyard. Um, yeah. I think it just depends, uh, Carrie, on uh, it takes the right person to, to, to buy it. Um, you know, and if someone's looking for a pool or that, that feature, I think right now it definitely helps. Um, because like I said, it's, it's something to do. I mean, it's, it's people are, Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, as far as value, do you? I mean, do you see that you can increase um, the price of a home for having a pool, or do you suggest, as a realtor, you know, you don't factor that into your into your sale cost? Um, I I would say probably no. Probably, I'd probably say no to that because. Um, where you get your value from it is again the multiple offers or or having the right people come in who want it. Um, the the value the value comes from obviously location 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 um, uh, is your biggest and, and foremost, um, and it comes to having high quality things that you have to have. Um, uh, the pool doesn't necessarily intrinsically mean higher value or higher cost. 
um, but it can. I, I hate to say I hate to say it that way, but it's it's true. It, I mean, we were willing to pay more money if it, if it meant we got the house with the pool. Okay, that's... So I, 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 hate, I hate to say it that way, um, but if if you're if you're one of the only houses in the neighborhood with a pool, I think it, it probably does help because it might be somebody who wants to move there. I definitely don't think it hurts. People aren't going to walk in there majority of the time and say, oh, we don't want this house to go to the pool. Some people may, but I, majority of people are not going to say that. Right. I've heard both opinions expressed and just have never known how to factor that into a sale value. And because, because both uh, opinions are expressed, that's why I, I can't really answer it because there are different marketplaces and different demands and some might love it, some might not. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Any other questions? If not, Kyle, on behalf of the Edwardsville Rotary, I'd love to thank you for your presentation. It's very informative. Thank you. And, uh, I know I learned something. I'm confident everybody else did too. And see the see the hands clapping up on the screens there. <laughs> uh, well, if anybody has any questions, they can they can call our office at any time, um, and uh, or shoot me an email. I'll put my information in the chat. Um, yeah, I'd be happy to answer. Sorry, Ann. Um, I'm over two now, pool and flowers. So I stink. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I, I really appreciate the opportunity. Uh, Russell, thanks, thanks a lot for inviting me. Um, and I'll get busy on my audit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> with the remaining time, uh, Rick Martini has joined us, so I'd like to give him an opportunity to say something about the golf scramble. Thanks, Mark. Hey, just wanted to let everybody know we're still on for the golf scramble on September 11th. Uh, we're out at Oak Brook Golf Club, just like we were last year. Um, we will have a little bit different uh, format. We're not going to be able to do a shotgun start, so we will have tee times, but we will be able to go both off the front and the back, so we should keep moving pretty good. Um, I apologize we haven't had the flyer out. We've had a little bit of issue getting the, uh, I guess, the file that the flyer was created on um, to be updated. Somebody has that that's no longer in the group, so we're having to track that down. So we'll get that flyer out to you just as quick as we can. And I should have a, a volunteer flyer out to everyone this afternoon if you do have a little time and you're able to, uh, you're able to help out on Friday the, uh, the 11th. So. Still looking forward to having uh, a good amount of teams out there and some tea sponsors. So thanks for your help and support. Awesome. I uh, want to mention that next week is the Rich Walker Show. Rich has the program and the invocation. So I'll be looking forward to that. And I don't know if uh, you guys noticed uh, Masanda's note, but uh, we had over uh, 51 uh, attendees today. So that's a huge number. Glad to see everybody here. Uh, glad to see some some familiar faces. And before we go to uh, the four-way test, I wanna to mention to those who haven't experienced the breakout rooms, once we do the four-way test, we'll um, go to breakout rooms that is just a random choice of different people. It gives us a chance to get together and uh, network and, and uh, have a little fellowship uh, as best we can doing it in a Zoom environment. So unless there's anything else. I, uh, I have something, Mark. Yes, Gary. Um, Jay Keevan couldn't be at the meeting last, last week, and he had sent me a flyer, wanted to know if I would send it out to the membership, which I just did. I was late in getting it out, but it's about the Special Olympics, and they've had a huge hit this year, as many of the other organizations has. So um, look for that flyer, and if you can contribute, that would be wonderful. Great. Thank you, Carrie. You're welcome. Um, Sandra, if you could set us up for the four-way test, and then after we finish the four-way test, uh, stick around for uh, the breakout room and see who you got lucky uh, to be with. <laughs>